safety in numbers. We all do our best to stay safe and out of danger's way, and we especially want to be smart and secure with money. But when it comes to financial security, some people try to break through our defenses, and the internet means there are more risks than ever. Like a lion stalking and isolating its prey, we're susceptible when alone. So how do we protect ourselves from the isolating tactics of romance scammers? It's 1 p.m. on a Sunday, and Carol, a hopeless romantic, is enjoying a lovely day by browsing at her local bookstore. Her phone dings in her pocket. It's a text from a stranger named Stephen, who clearly has the wrong number. She corrects him, but to her surprise, he continues to text. Normally, she'd move on, but Stephen is disarmingly charming. He compliments her witty responses and says this wrong number must be fate bringing them together. Ah, oh, what an adorable modern meat cute. According to the Federal Trade Commission, romance scams caused over $300 million of fraud in 2020, double the year before. That's a real lion's share of income. We like to give strangers the benefit of the doubt, and online we can only believe they are who they say they are. This is the crux of a romance scam, a type of fraud where a criminal uses a fake persona to manipulate a stranger into sending them money. Uh, you do not have to be gullible to be scammed. Vulnerability is part of the human condition. In the right time and place, anybody is susceptible to a certain scam or another. Confident you wouldn't be caught off guard? Be careful. Overconfidence was a large contributing factor to the personalities of those more likely to be scammed, according to a 2016 study. Weeks later, Carol is texting with Stephen. They've been dying to meet up in person, but he's overseas on an oil rig. How intrepid. He has a vacation in a few weeks, and he wants to fly out to see her. The only problem is, he's just a thousand dollars short of affording a plane ticket. He's embarrassed to even ask, but he wonders if Carol could help him pay the fare. Carol is unsure, but then again, what's money when compared to true love? Romance scams are, by design, about giving away money to a stranger, not getting something tangible in return. That's a hurdle compared to other types of scams. So what makes them so effective? One key psychological tool is isolation. A 2019 study found that lonely people were much more likely to lose money to scams. The huge rise of scams during the COVID pandemic may make sense, with so many people dealing with isolation and loneliness from quarantining. Scammers do try to isolate their victims because if you talk through something with somebody else, you're more likely to realize that something doesn't quite sound right. They're trying to get you in the moment so fixated that you don't look to other people you could check things with. So don't just think you can sniff out a scam. Learn to spot the red flags. Be wary of an email, text, or DM out of the blue. Romance scammers will love bomb targets with too much intimacy too quickly. If someone asks for money or makes investment offers, this is not the sign of a real, healthy relationship. Ask to do a method of communication that's going to be harder to fake. Ask for phone calls, ask to meet in person or a video call. All of those are techniques that's going to be much harder for someone to fake. Google their name or take their picture and do a reverse image search to see if the picture corresponds to who you think you're talking to. Carol is cooking dinner in the kitchen with her mother when she gets another text from Stephen, asking if she's thought more about sending him money for the plane fare. Carol swallows her pride and asks her mother for advice. Mum can see the scam for what it is, and wisely advises Carol to end this so-called relationship. Carol does so and instantly feels a wave of relief. Perhaps she's not as alone as she thought. Romance scammers prey on singular people with one-on-one -on -one personal relationships. To take away their power, take away your own isolation. Arm yourself with a good pride of trustworthy friends and family. And as Zell would like to remind you, only send money to those you know and trust.